That was to Luke chapter number 9. Luke chapter number 9. Thank you all so much for your faithfulness throughout the weekend. You know, it's been busy. I want to, this evening, uh, look at the Word of God. <clears throat> and uh, the Holy Ghost is able to empower us and help us, but I'm, I'm running on empty this evening. <laughs> Just uh, fatigued in... Uh, uh, this cold and this life. I just want to share the word of God. I want it to be a challenge to us. Amen. But I just want us to give her an honor and pray. Amen. So, it's a powerful thought. Amen. From the word of God. All right, uh, Luke 9, verse number 21. The word of God says, And he straightly charged them and commanded and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised to the third day. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake the same shall save it. For what is a man up, uh, up? Uh, uh, for what profit is a man? Let me find a place that isn't looking here and lost it. For for what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? I want to look at this thought for just a few moments this evening when the cross when the cross becomes our friend. When the cross becomes our friend. When we look back, let me give you a little bit of history. Let's talk about the cross for just a few moments. Just to be able to get an idea of what the cross means to us. Amen. The cross in, in the days uh, when, when the Romans occupied Israel, it, it was used as a cruel instrument of death. It, it, it was considered the death of a slave. Whoever was killed upon the cross was a slave to the cross. And the punishment of the cross was for crimes such as the, a treason or desertion in the face of the enemy, for rob, robbery or for assassination. And so usually before someone was crucified upon the cross, it was preceded by scourgings and them being beaten, uh, 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 undoubtedly really hastening an impending death that was coming because of, of the cross. And so the victim that uh, 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 would, would, would uh, uh, die upon the cross, he had to carry his own cross particularly the beam that is, uh, 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 the cross beam there, even if he didn't carry the whole cross, uh, uh, that, that upright part, he had to carry it to the place of his, his uh, uh, execution. And when we think about this, there was probably only three to four nails, typically three, possibly four nails, that would be that that would transfix that, uh, that individual upon the cross that would be dying there. And uh, uh, as, 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 his, as, as he was nailed to the cross, there would be a platform to which his feet would be given that he could rest a bit, that he wouldn't, the nails just wouldn't tear completely through his skin, but, but he would, uh, that, that individual would be able to, to, to put their feet there upon that for a bit of support, amen, as, as that transfixed member was there. And the suffering of, of death by crucifixion, it was intense. CDs is what we use in the medical terms, uh, but, but it would be inflammation and swelling and, 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 and retention of water there. Amen. And so it would be that a severe local inflammation uh, that would be in the hands and in the feet because of, of the nails that was run through. And, and there would be a, 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 a jagging feeling there in the hands and the feet. And, and then it would be accompanied by a terrible 
fever because of the inflammation that was there as well. So can you imagine that traumatic fever? And then it's aggravated by the exposure of the sun that, that is there in the open area where that person is dying upon a cross. And then there would be that swelling in the arms and legs around, around the nails, around uh, 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 the, 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 where there was tendons torn, and there would be nerves that, that would cause excruciating pain because of, of the nails being cast through them. The arteries in the head and in the abdomen would begin to swell and become intense, amen, and, and, and there would be such, such, such pain within the head. Uh, and can you imagine that the throbbing headache that was there? And, and the mind was already confused because of the terrible death that was coming upon the impendingness of being crucified upon a cross. The victim of crucifixion literally died a thousand deaths. Some of the hours were so exhausting as that person would finally sink into unconsciousness and then would die. It is said that it would take anywhere up to uh, 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 at least 36 hours before the victim would really die. And, and sometimes they would hasten death by breaking the victim's legs or giving a, a sharp punch beneath the armpit. Crucifixion, that is what the cross is, and that is what it represents. I hope in some way I was able to paint to you a, a brutal picture because that's what it is. That's what it represented, death, judgment, pain, heartache, is all represented by the cross. On the surface, a cross would seem anything but our friend until Jesus. Until Jesus. Until he was crucified. In Luke 23, the word of God says, And when they were coming to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Let me tell you what the cross really looks like and represents now. It looks like love. It looks like mercy. It looks like salvation. It looks like healing. It looks like deliverance. It looks like all the goodness of God because of Jesus. Imagine all that terribleness of the cross being turned and the death of Jesus upon the cross. Now the cross becomes our <coughs> friends. There are three words that I think about when I think about the cross and, and, and describe. The first is submission, the second being separation, and the third being commitment. I, I just want to stop for a few moments and talk to you here if I could. You know, there are many religious traditions and, 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 and you know, when, when, I, when I work my job as a chaplain, you know, I, I, I lay aside my, my hat as a pastor and it's a different role in finding the boundaries of all that sometimes has been somewhat challenging for me, but yet wanting to be successful in that role. And so I, 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 I hear folks as they look at the cross and their, their view of the cross is so much different than mine. Some will say, but the suffering that I'm going through through. When I look at Jesus upon the cross, it reminds me because He suffered, I can make it through my suffering as well. And, and, and I remind myself, but that's not the view I have of the cross. I don't hold Jesus on the cross. Amen. He's already become the sacrifice. He was already buried and He's resurrected. So when I look at the cross, I don't look at my Jesus suffering and thinking that I'll suffer the way that He did. Amen. I look at the cross and it's salvation for me. It's redemption for me. It's healing for me. That is what the cross means to me. Amen. So much more. Amen. It was a brutal place. But the cross has become my friend. It's an emblem that is carried and everyone sees an emblem. But what does the cross mean? Submission. Separation. 
a commitment. Here we are at Valentine's Day. It's been said before that it was questioned, Jesus, how much do you love me? And he said, this much. And he stretched out his arms and died for me. Wow. That's the cross. That's our friend. <coughs> Amen. And so when we look at the cross mission, in James 4, verse number 6 through 8, the word of God says, but he giveth more grace. But he giveth more grace. I love that. Grace for grace. He gives more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Amen. The cross means this, that there must be submission. We want the grace of God and we want more grace. But God calls us to a place that He wants us to submit ourselves to the cross. Brother Justin talked earlier this evening, amen, of our identity and our authority in Christ. Amen. When we resist, amen, the enemy, amen, he will flee from us. And when we draw nigh to God, knowing our identity in Christ and knowing the authority that he gives, amen, we purify our hearts and we're not double-minded. There is a submission to the cross. I love the cross. Amen. He took my cross. Amen. So his cross cross becomes my friend. Amen. So I'll submit to him. Whatever he asks of me, I will submit to him. I submit my mind, my body, everything about me. I submit it to God. I resist the enemy. I won't allow him to whisper in my ear. Amen. I resist him and I read the authority of God's word and that's what is the voice that speaks to me. Submission to the cross. You've been fighting the devil lately. Submit ourselves to God and resist the enemy. The devil and he'll flee from us. Not only is there submission, but there has to be separation. In 2 Corinthians 6, 16 and 17, the word of God says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in, in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, wherefore come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Amen. The greatest thing about being a friend of the cross. Amen. As I said this morning, in this covenant relationship with God, it's a love-hate relationship. We learn to love the things that God loves. We learn to hate the things that God hates. God wants us to live separate. Amen. We live in this world. I want you to think about this. We talked about this a bit on Tuesday evening. We live in this world where there's a culture and there's a mindset that is driven in us every day. Amen. But when we come to church, we realize that God is counterculture. Amen. He has His own way of doing things. And so if we are going to be friends with the cross, amen, we've got to separate ourselves from the flesh and the things of this world because the cross in this world of the flesh doesn't go on. Amen. The cross is an example of what it is to crucify our desires and do God's will. The cross is an example of what this world will do to you. It is sin. It is death. Amen. But the cross is life. Amen. And when we find that the cross causes the separation, amen, about everything in our life, amen, holy dress and holy thinking, holy conversation, amen, separated under prayer, separated under the Word of God, amen, separated under holy living, amen. It calls us to a place of separation. Right. The cross becomes our friend. The cross is an emblem that many will wear and these days be tattooed on them, amen. You can wear it, you can tattoo it, you can do whatever you want, but the cross never really becomes your friend until you become separate from the world. You can say I'm a friend of the cross, but if we've never practiced submission 
of separation when the cross is not our friend. The third thing is commitment. Submission, separation, commitment. The word of God says, trust in the Lord and do ye good. So shall you dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. It is commitment. Are you committed to the cross tonight? Is the cross your friend? It's crazy the things that we'll do for our friends. They call us up in the middle of the night. I'll be there. Can you do this for me? Absolutely. You're my friend. I'll be there. But have we committed to the cross? Where have we called to God? I'll go. Whatever you ask of me, I'm committed to it. I'll do. Has the cross become our friend? It's tough to find ourselves in submission and separation and in commitment. But when we follow love, we'll do anything. Speaking of love, you look at your spouse tonight and you think, man, I'd do anything for them. I'd do anything. Some of you have probably even done some crazy things. Well, Doug, you probably even gave up some honey days. No. No? Okay, <laughs> but I'm going to go with the message. <laughs> maybe this year. Maybe this year. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Wow. <laughs> I got myself in trouble, didn't I? And I might have got Brother Doug in trouble with me. <laughs> says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections thereof. Amen. A real friend of the cross will say, I realize that this is not her, but this is my friend. Some folks live their whole life thinking serving God is a burden. And serving God is our friend. The young man who carried his brother through a long, difficult journey. They said, wasn't that difficult? No. He's my brother. Hey Amen. Isn't it difficult to live for God? Some folks think it's crazy. Even folks that, 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 that are Christian, you go to church twice on Sunday? It's not a word. He's my friend. I love him. You mean to tell me you never drink? You never talk this way? No. He's my friend. It's not a word. He's my friend. You mean you didn't retaliate when they did that to you? You're crazy. No. He's my friend. The cross is my friend. When we come to the place of submission, separation, and commitment. Sister Beth, if you come to the piano tonight, <laughs> it's all about the cross. If I were to ask you tonight that within the pages of God's Word, if there's one thing that is written about, what would it be? I think I could clearly say it's about the cross. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all about a God who loved us so much that He died on Calvary for us. And so, I don't think that we can read the Word of God and live for God until we get to the place where we can say, the cross is my friend. 
that despised thing, that emblem of death, and how horrible it was for the Romans as they crucified someone. And I just can't imagine. You see, I, I, I live in a culture, in, in our Western world, even in death and in dying, we have a wonderful um, a medicine called palliative, palliative care. And what that is, it goes to whatever degree to bring comfort measures, even to folks who are dying. And we make sure they're taken care of physically and emotionally and spiritually. We want there to be a comfort level. The cross was anything but a comfort level. So it's hard for us to sometimes imagine. And how can we embrace that? And how can it be a friend? The only way we can embrace it is through the love of Jesus Christ. Because it becomes our redemption, our salvation, our victory. And so tonight I just simply want to say this in closing. I don't know where you are. No, no. All through life are going to have challenges and bends and turns. But wherever we are, the cross has to be our friend. I look at it this way. In my class this week, you're probably tired of hearing me say things. In, in my class this week, one of the greatest things that jumped out to me in my reading was this. Is that there comes a point when doctors are treating people that there's no more treatment. Oftentimes, doctors say, I can't offer any more hope. Wait a second. That's where the chaplain comes in. Because when there's no more hope in medicine, we still offer hope. You know why? That the cross is my friend. It doesn't remind me of suffering that because he suffered, oh, I can go through suffering. But it reminds me of hope and deliverance. That for whatever length of time may be, there is still hope and life in Jesus Christ. Amen. And there's still hope beyond this life. That is our friend, the cross. Amen. Would you grab hold of the cross? Amen. Would you say, God, I love the cross? Amen. To this cross, I will submit myself. And to this cross, I will show myself separate from the world. And to this cross, I will commit. Amen. Submission and separation and commitment. That is our friend, the cross. And to have a relationship of friendship, you've got to communicate. Amen. Would you come and communicate to the cross? You're my friend. I submit. I submit. It's all about the cross. How much did Christ love us this much? And he opened his arms and died for us. That the cross that we carry in life and in death becomes our friend, not our enemy. Would you gather into that?